Okay. Ready? Yep. <sighs> okay. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. This is episode 260, and I know it's been a while, but there's literally nothing, nothing that is going on. I mean, I guess everyone's trying to be vaccinated. I guess we could do a show about about how to get vaccinated, but it varies state to state, and we learned about that today. If you want to join our Signal group and discuss how you can get uh, vaccine in your specific state. I can only say New Jersey, and it sounds like Washington State has nothing. So th there you go. We gave you your answer in <laughs> Refer 30 seconds. to your healthcare professional and, to, and take your doctor's advice on vaccinations and any other medical procedures or proceedings that you need to elect. That was Tom taking his uh, disclaimer hat off. Uh, so so no, seriously, it's it's yeah. There's some solar winds news. Uh, bad things happen. Yeah, things are bad. Uh, some really weird iOS vulnerability news. Some really weird Android vulnerability news. Things that, I mean, we tell you update all the time, but there's nothing really there. And instead of saying, okay, yes, you have to do this, it's just not worth doing a show. But that that's what it is. I will say on in New Jersey, the vaccination problem is is they're vaccinating people. That is awesome. That is great. The problem is they decided to make a system for young people, but to make the elderly go through. So check the webs every day, have your list, check the websites. Okay. Then click on every link down the list. If one opens up, you have 10 seconds and maybe you'll get it. But if you get it, now you have to hope that there's no snow, which we've had lots of snow. If something, if the state doesn't get enough vaccine, they canceled. You have to start this process over. If there's a snowstorm, you have to start this process over. So every little thing, you have to start this process over. And it's like winning a lottery ticket, like not the Powerball, but like the, the $5 lottery ticket. So you can do it. So the good news is in New Jersey, at least now, everyone I talk to has at least one person in their uh, family at least one shot in mainly the elderly parents and then the other problem is that there's no honor among thieves everyone has uh, an underlying health condition so basically it's if you're lying you're not getting the vaccine in new jersey they put the smokers in the group so i i'm not telling you to buy a cigar but what's the definition of smoking i don't know so that's new jersey for you but we found out that we're over a million shots in um, 60,000 people are getting vaccinated a day, which is awesome number. So let's keep on going. Yep. And, uh, you know, if, if you're cutting in line to get vaccines, like in, in my opinion, at least you're getting a vaccine. Um, I don't know, like when, when faced with the, the possibility of anti-vaxxers and people who aren't believing the science and other things like if you're getting the vaccine, but in not like perfect moral upstanding ways, there are worse people out there in my mind, but I'm, I'm also extremely opinionated on this subject. So, well, look, if you're getting the vaccine to go to jet set around the world to say you have a vaccine, yes, I will say you are a terrible person, but I'm a school teacher and I'm in person. So, you know what? Uh, you know what, maybe I do put that pack of cigarettes in my bag and say, hey, I'm smoking or whatever it is. Like if you've been stuck for nine months, I, there was a great tweet. If you're mad about new government restrictions, you're probably the reason why we have them in the first place. And and it's like, yeah, I, I've been I've been being very careful, not going out, not taking my kids places, doing all these things. I need this to be over. And you know what? If I have to quarantine and be safe for another two or three months so everyone's happy, I'm good with that. But, and if, yeah, if, if you're going to get the vaccine and you're going to still take things carefully, awesome. But now we're double masking. That's what I'm doing. Like, it's, and there's no, there's no protections. So everybody is, the, fed, the federal government's trying to pass something after we get through all this other nonsense. So, it's one of those you got to stay safe because there's nothing there for you. So, yeah, it's it's been fun. I haven't uh, I haven't really left my apartment uh, until this weekend. Unfortunately, um, I, I really haven't left or done much of anything uh, since March, which is not going to lie. I'm going a little stir crazy here. You you might have noticed. Uh, I know we had we had at least one person commenting like, "Hey Tom, I watched the YouTube video." Uh, your face is uh, 
fuller, definitely more full of, of life than usual. And yes, I have packed on the, the COVID pounds. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I had to go out and buy a car uh, because my other car was like unsafe to drive during COVID times. And let me tell you, that was an experience. Um, Does your car have a battery? It does have a battery. Yes. Okay. So I got that answer. Okay. Oh, oh that so, battery. Yeah, does no. it have that battery or is it a it, regular battery? No, no. It's a regular old, okay. I, I, you know, do the thing and it turns over the, the burning dinosaur engine. Uh, it is not a fun, fancy battery. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just, just... It, it, my car does run on uh, old dinosaur bones. That's okay. Yeah. Cause you're going nowhere you're going yeah, I, miles to the store <laughs> exactly i drive up the street i drive down the street and you know this year uh like 2020 not even that much we basically get in the car to be like hey i want to get out of the apartment i'm going to get in the car and drive through the the washington state countryside and, you know that's pretty good it's safe it's socially distant i'm not like running around picking up random passerbys on the side of the road uh but to get out of the the apartment yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <sighs> We're almost there. As I as I well, tomorrow in New Jersey, it's going to have weather. So when you can now be virtual, this first time that somebody says it's not going to be bright and sunny, it's we're going all virtual, which you know what? I'm happy because I'd rather be here um with that said all right we're almost seven minutes in and we've done nothing so far but well just now that we're just wasting time we have a signal group we ask questions in the signal group find us tweet us uh tweet the show at in 30 uh tweet me my, somewhere go to the website find us we'll get you in that's how we're doing things and we have another signal episode it's not going to be as i don't know how long it's going to be but it's gonna we're going to discuss it so uh, Forbes put out an article. What is this? I'm looking for the date, February 8th. So that was two days ago with the headline, can the FBI hack into private signal messages on a locked iPhone? Question mark, which means that they don't really know. They're just, yeah. they're just, uh, speculating evidence indicates. Yes. Okay. So of course, the first thing everyone, every news article wants to do is like it's like with Apple News. They want to say something really, really scandalous, so you click on it. Then they don't care what it says. Like what what we know about the new Mac Pro, and the answer is nothing. It will happen. Uh, that we got iOS thirteen juicy tidbits or i or iPhone thirteen. It will come out. It will come out in the fall. It will be uh, lighter, stronger, faster. And you're like, well, what yeah. Tom says next on the N thirty podcast will yeah. surprise you. Tom this says is basically what he is likes this? Chipotle and Signal. Like it's not really all that surprising. Okay, so yeah, so so yes, it's a race against the clock. The bad guys find a loophole. Signal finds out about it and patches it. That that's basically the back and forth. Um, if you go through this article, it's it's basically saying that when you unlock your phone, it stores the signal messages in a half sort of quasi encrypted state that that these uh police things these tools can can get and then they'll be decrypted because they're not trying to make your life really difficult now you know the answer and it was on an old phone that was now patched we're done the whole podcast is done <laughs> That's but it. let's it's go into it a little more <laughs> yeah so um if you don't know what what most modern phone operating systems do is they've got varying encryption modes right like if the whole thing is an opaque encrypted brick all the time you can't really use it right like there has to be some amount of opening stuff up and decrypting it for you to actually be able to use your phone right so take like text messages if your text messages are never decrypted and you can't decrypt you know the cipher text with your eyeballs and your brain um you have to somehow you know, like decrypt it to put it into a human readable form so you and your brain and your eyeballs can make use of the data that's presented to you right there has to be some encrypt uh, some decryption somewhere in that chain uh now for for the iphone specifically and i believe android does this now too everything is encrypted at rest but when you first power on your phone and you type in that pin because uh at least for the iphone face id isn't enabled yet 
Um, this is an important point to come back to, but you put in that pin, your phone unlocks. What it does at that point is that's, that's elevating the phone's, or, or I guess decreasing the phone's security by a smidge. What it basically does is it goes from like this fully encrypted bulletproof state where basically almost nothing of the phone is plain text, right? Like the stuff uh, like your your medical information, if you like uh, do the in case of emergency stuff on the iPhone or Android, like that stuff, yeah, it's going to be plain text. So people can hit that button and say, okay, here's who we have to contact, right? Here's this person's emergency contact information or whatever. Um, you know, stuff like the lock screen wallpaper isn't going to be uh, encrypted at, the, at that point. Um, but when you put in that first password, it unlocks certain other areas of the phone to be able to do things like, you know, receive uh, notifications for new signal messages or WhatsApp or iMessage or whatever. It unlocks pieces of the phone necessary to work while the thing is locked in your pocket, but it's not in a fully super encrypted state. Like some things are able to uh, be decrypted during this restful state. That's not like the first power on. So you've got like fully encrypted and then you've got, well, the phone's been unlocked before. It's like first unlock is, is how Apple refers to it. Um, and then from there, you know, you can go down the list. You you face ID the thing, you swipe up, then the phone's fully unlocked at that point. Um, apparently in this state, um, when, when you've powered on your phone, you unlock it for the first time, Signal is one of those things that, yeah, is in this quasi-encrypted state. And apparently on, uh, you know, old versions of iOS, presumably old phones, presumably old version of signal, presumably because we didn't get a whole lot of information out of this. Um, yeah. Law enforcement tools were able to recover a partially decrypted signal database full of these messages that shouldn't really be super surprising to people. Um, the best thing to do if, if you find yourself like in a situation, like I, I always do this when I get pulled over, not because I have anything to hide, but just because it's good data practices, right? Hold those buttons. You'll get this thing, right? And then slide the power off. You're done. That's it. So if you're pulled over, you can hit those buttons, turn off your phone. Um, and I have not confirmed this, but you might even be able to leave it on. Just hit cancel on that screen because it does make you put in your pin again, at least on the iPhone. Uh, I know Android's got something that would disable like their their touch ID, their fingerprint unlock or face unlock. Um, but the safest way, like the easiest advice I can give to all modern phones is just shut the thing off. Like if, if you're in, if you're dealing with law enforcement, if you're getting pulled over, right, if you're not like actively recording them, which depending on your situation may or may not be a bad idea, like recording law enforcement is uh, absolutely protected, at least in the US. Um, and if you feel the need, go for it. Uh, I will never tell you to not record uh, interactions with law enforcement, because as we've seen, it's kind of an important deal. Um, going to try to avoid getting political, but in some situations well, can say, it can look, be beneficial to you. Is your uh, body cam on? I think that's a perfectly response. I mean, anyway, mm -hmm. but so what yeah. you're saying is turn their phone off. So yeah. uh, iOS has a thing of like SOS emergency. Yeah. So, so now, um, now this yeah. is going to ask me for my password, right? It's, it's before that, like quasi decrypted state. So it's going to ask me for my pin here. Um, and all from what we understand about uh, the uh, the police and the feds, uh, you know, break in tools, cell phone breaking tools, um, they can't get past this type of lock, this type of encryption, uh, at least not yet. Again, it's a cat and mouse game, but you know, from a fresh power off state, that's the safest state your phone can be in. With Android, by the way, restarting both of these phones are very quick. If you restart mm -hmm. Android, by the way, it goes. It goes very quickly. So by the time you realize you're pull, being pulled over, hitting the restart will, by the time anything happens, already be restarted and you'll be in the please enter your PIN or your password or whatever it is. Um, what I was going to say is uh, iOS has SOS uh, emergency mode. So it'll disable face ID or whatever it is. So you would always have to put it in, which may not be exactly the same because I saw your eyes go. But I think it, it, like you said, turn it off. 
But if you're scared, I think SOS mode may be the all. I, I want to caveat that I don't know. Maybe also okay, at least from that term. It, but again, if you if you read the story, it's about some gun traffickers that got caught. I mean, this is not a random pullover where where this is happening. It's it's always a good idea to turn off your phone in any sort of uh, right to remain silent situation. But this is a little more than that. But they're saying it looks like to be an iPhone 11, um, and uh, and. With iPhone 11, it was iOS 13 because iOS 14 didn't come out until the iPhone 12. So we know that it's an old one. We also know that the old iPhones had, and I'm forgetting the name, Checkmate and something Rain, Check Rain, some sort of exploits that allowed you to jailbreak. But you had to do some weird thing. Like it had to be docked to your computer when you turned it on and then you had to run some terminal commands, but you were able to jailbreak it. Presumably, this is sort of, I, I have a feeling this is what they're doing. They're, they're able to, well, while it's still powered on, but not unlocked, you can hook it up and then run these commands and they'll be able to do something, pull stuff off. It's after that first unlock, like you said, to keep it, to keep it not completely encrypted, but enough to get the job done. Um, and, and keep in mind, like the, the Forbes article in the headline calls out signal, right? But this applies to virtually every messaging app out there. And, and they do go into this in the article, right? Like WhatsApp is part of this, iMessage is gonna be part of this. Uh, I mean, you, you name it, if the phone is unlocked and you can just click around stuff, well, you, guess what? You can script something to do that too. This is like the previous article we covered, right? And and the previous article that actually Signal responded to, um, like what Celebrate basically does is takes unlocked phones and scrolls through messages, taking screenshots. Like, cool, big deal. Humans can do this work too. There's no magic here. Um, and and by the way, Apple they asked. Well, Signal says if you have physical possession, yes, if you have physical possession, a lot of things can happen. Um. We found out that that Cellubrite or whatever the FBI literally desoldered the chip and put it on a different phone to get what is it? That's how they got the San Bernardino's uh, thing. They desoldered the chip and did this ten guesses and kept on doing it. I never saw okay. confirmation for that. They said it took them th about they they claimed three million dollars and they were able to unlock it with basically doing that like 10 10 code do nine codes do whatever it needs to do and keep on doing that like but again it's again we talk about threat models so they uh forbes reached out to apple and apple obviously doesn't comment on their security but they uh they did point them to new updates in ios 14 and the newer models and everything else so it goes back again with all of this is always be updated i, I think that's the biggest takeaway from all of this you, you can't solve these weird problems but you can be updated and if you have an ios if you have an ios device the, the updates will last five or six years. Like they're going all the way back and they learn from the beginning, instead of pushing all the updates, they push only the updates that the phone can handle. Now I've, again, I haven't had an old iPhone. I had, like I said, a 3GS that when it got to the second year, it was dirt slow. But from what I'm hearing, people have iPhone eights right now and they're running iOS 14 with no problem whatsoever. And you're looking at a three or four year old phone without any problems, any speed loss or anything like that. So you don't get the new crazy features. But again, as this article is saying, you're, you're, you're running, if you're trafficking guns and you're trying to be secure, maybe you don't have an older phone. <laughs> maybe you stay like up to date with everything. But and, you say this. Yeah. Keep in mind, like the, the Forbes article is specifically talking about gun traffickers wanted by the FBI chances are if you are listening to this podcast uh, if you're watching us on youtube uh if you're in our our signal group that you should join this probably isn't really lining up with your typical threat model right for for the vast majority of of our listeners and not to presume but the vast majority of our listeners their threat model is stuff like hey here's a phishing link or how do I keep my family from infecting uh, the, the family computer with like LimeWire 
like malware, right? Like that's, those are the kind of threat models that you're typically dealing with. If you are a gun trafficker running from the FBI and you would like to discuss advanced threat models, um, we're probably not smart enough to be the people you want to talk to. Uh, but, you know, you can try to pick our brain. Um, well, that's, that's for, the thing. For any you're... law enforcement agents uh, listening, no, we, we have not been in contact with um, gun runners. So, uh, I don't know. It's, I mean, I know people who own guns, but I am not in the illegal gun trading or trafficking business. Anyway, the issue becomes, again, we always talk about what your threat model is. And, again, it's... We, I, I mean, we've said this, you don't have to ask, you don't have to bust somebody's pin. You can give them a really crappy BuzzFeed quiz and it accomplish the same thing. What that means is, is there's other ways to get that information just because it's encrypted end to end. Yes, it's, just, it's encrypted end to end, but you could just ask the person, pay, pay somebody a quarter and ask them for their social security number. You'd be surprised how many people would do it for a quarter. But, Okay. Yes. The pr people are going to remain silent because that's their threat model. They're going to not say anything. They're going to deny everything. And now you have to go through it. So you don't attack the encryption because you know, you can't break it. Is there something else you can break? And that's one or the, one of the phones. Can you break one of the phones? And that's the cat and mouse game. And like you said, this is not just a signal problem. Now, if signal was, forgetting to encrypt the messages that's a different story but it doesn't look like they're forgetting it just looks like in order to make the phone work it has to be in a reduced encrypted state on the phone until it restarts which i don't know if you can get away from without some other crazy nonsense like other than the messages taking forever to load and everything else i don't know if you can get away from that so one thing that that you can do if you are concerned about this stuff is let's say you have a particularly sensitive conversation that you you don't want out under any circumstances uh signal does have the great feature of disappearing messages so you can set that thing like you you don't even have to remember it or consider it like if you don't want to keep anything longer than a month like i'm pretty sure a month is one of those options right just have the thing clean every so often there's also uh the thing where you can just like carte blanche delete all of the messages in a thread or to a person or just clear out your messaging history completely. Um, we don't do this for the WhatsApp group because the history is kind of nice for people to be able to scroll back through if we've talked about something or somebody wants to reference an old message. But if like you're texting your significant other and you just don't care about that history, you have nothing there that you can't recreate otherwise, yeah, set those things to expire after a week. Like, forget about it. Uh, because if the messages are deleted, right, they're not easy to get back. Uh, Signal doesn't have copies. Um, sure, technically, they could be undeleted from your phone with some forensic analysis. But uh, let's be honest, your threat model probably doesn't include that. And if it does... Um, might need to think about some better OPSEC in the first place. I was going to ask that. I was going to ask that. When you we say deleted, are we... We're, we're, we're significantly certain, we're, we're pretty much certain that Signal's not keeping it, it's actually deleted. I mean, we think that. So that's what I do. With all my friends, Signal's max time, though, unfortunately, is a week. Okay. I wish it was longer, um, but it's a week. I set a lot of my conversations up to a week because, like you said, if it's after a week, it doesn't really matter. And again, I have different messengers for different things. Uh, if I... I and I'm, that's not to say that all my secrets are in Signal, but you know what? I, I understand that I can't move my family off WhatsApp, so that's what it's going to have to be. But when I'm sending something super serious, we're going to go there. And I set everything to delete in a week because, like you said, after a week, it's probably good. When when sending, uh, when sending maybe, possibly, not that I would ever do this, but if somebody needed, like, a password to a streaming services account... Um, that they may or may not have a profile on. Um, I have sent passwords and signal by saying, hey, set the message expiry time to five minutes. Send the, the creds, reset it back to like a week or whatever it was previously, or even just turn it off. Um, and then those messages will burn. So you can set up like, hey, I'm going to set this thing, send these messages that have a different retention policy that I want to manage, and then unset that flag. 
Um, and it allows you to have some messages that are expiring and others that aren't. Um, so I have done that before. And in my opinion, it works fairly well. So I don't know, play with it. Uh, you can also delete messages in Signal. So that's nice. Uh, keep in mind that none of these features uh, protects you from the person on the other side of the conversation you're talking to, right? Like if the person you're talking to is an FBI agent and they are taking all the pictures and making videos of all your conversations and like writing stuff down in a little logbook, right? Nothing will protect you from <laughs> from that person. Um, if your threat model includes the person on the other side of that signal conversation, um, I don't think any amount of encryption is, or OPSEC is going to help you there. That, and again, that's another obvious point to have that the other, the other side could be somebody you don't want or is talking or whatever it is. But with that said, that's, it's, we have enough time. I don't know if you know enough about this, what this uh, TLS proxy issue is. Yeah, that's probably a good thing to bring up. And I, one that I completely forgot about. So a signal put out because, so uh, Iran decided to block I think it was Iran anyway. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I yeah. uh, decided to uh, block access to the Signal network. Um, Signal said, hey, the people need to talk um, and put out kind of a slapdash thrown together, quick and dirty uh, TLS proxy so people in Iran could reach through that, uh, reach through those bridges and get to the Signal network. Um, people started complaining, hey, you can tell this is a proxy. Uh, you know, this is this is dangerous. This doesn't work exactly like this. There are, you know, clear benefits to doing things this way and you did things this other way. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, those complaints are valid. Um, Signal literally built in through this thing up like super, super quick. And I, I don't want to make a bunch of excuses, but, but, um, when you're trying to get something out really quickly and on a deadline in a hurry, yeah, you're going to rush some things. And Signal did. Um, and you know, is it supremely dangerous to use these proxies? No, I I would argue not. Um, could you theoretically get caught using these proxies, or could the government you know block Signal's proxies with the understanding that yeah, guess what? These things look like proxies. Uh, they act like proxies and we're going to block the proxies. Yes, they, they could. Um, but there seems to be a, a pretty major lack of nuance in some uh, technical circles. Security tends to be one of those, right? It's either secure or it's not. Um, and the uh, that's how people think of it. It's unfortunately not the reality. Security is not binary. Uh, it's hardly even measurable, honestly. Um, but what Signal put together is better than the alternative of people not being able to communicate or needing to use less secure methods to communicate with each other. Um, could it have been better? Yeah, absolutely. But was it timely and did it help people? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and frankly, when, when they did that kind of balancing act, and I apologize for my phone going off, when they did that kind of balancing act of we need to get this thing out fast, but is it the best, most bulletproof option, right? They, they opted to balance for speed in that case. It's unfortunate that, that you know, the world kind of works that way and we always have trade-offs, but that's a reality. Um, luckily, it's not, uh, it, unless you are disconnected from the signal network and you need to use one of these proxies to get into it, it this problem won't affect you it will never affect you, um, right? Because the proxies are elective. You have to elect to use a certain bridge to get into the signal network. Um, it's not something that just happens automatically. So yeah, that's really about all I've got to say for that. You build something it, it fast just, and stuff falls through the cracks. It was just a little weird that it was this nonsense of, it's not secure, can't use signal. And it's like, no, no, it, it was a proxy which I don't know too much about, but it was this proxy thing. And then it's like in Iran and it was thrown together and it was, it's like, hmm, let's think about this for a second. 
it's they're not going to do ship something that's completely insecure there had to be a reason and if you just thought about it for a few minutes it makes sense look moxie marlin spike the founder of signal he's not dumb he's not trying he's he's trying to build a business and he's trying to make money yes but he's also trying to be secure about it so there are these weird trade-offs like when the new contact joins that everyone hates um you can turn that off. There are these little things, but at the core of it is that they're trying to be secure. And and we have to, and we, yes, we have to be skeptical, but guess what? It's not, they're trying to do the right thing and they are listening. So when people do have a problem, they do respond. So anyway, with that said, we are now actually over time after we said it may be short. Uh, we're going to end and uh, we will, I guess, see everyone next week, hopefully. See ya. So bye, everybody. Okay.